back, friends, to Focus and Madness, the wrap-up episode, final episode, for reals this time, uh, sponsored by Roll20, the Onyx Path, and viewers like you. Uh, thank you to our patrons who support us monetarily and continue to harass and troll me. Thank you to Adele, Al, Helen, Michael, Alexander, Bernie, Blood Angel, Brandon, Chris, Daniel, Doc, Delore, Emil, Funzu Suru Ali, uh, George, Jack, Jenny, Josh, Camo, still happy birthday. Uh, Cat Feathers, Crazy Man, seventeen seventy two. Melissa, Michael, Milo V three. Moku, Neo Megas, Noba, Perry, Puppeteer, Ramon, Roviscrad, Ryan, Shaksara, Sinna, Songbird, Sriracha. That dude. Uh, Thomas, Thomas, Toast, Usif Sama, Vortex, Winnie the Drew, still not updated. Uh, Woodfoot and Zoltan. I uh, thank you all very much for your support. It does mean quite a lot to us. Um, when we last left the Cabal. Songbird made an artifact and then disappeared. So uh, we pick up uh, basically a day or two later um, with the hierarch <laughs> coming by uh, to to see what has transpired here. And because let's be honest, there was no keeping this a secret. There's also no reason to keep this a secret, yeah. but the hierarch is very curious about what the hell is going on. So the hierarch shows up with. Um, so I just want to make sure I have the con. So the hierarch is coming to the rookery workshop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Check out okay. the thing. Find yep. out what happened. Mm -hmm. Look, uh, if there's one thing you'd know about Songbird, is that this thing absolutely must be bragged about. That's very. Very true. Rubbed in his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, uh, the horror comes uh, comes around uh, along with uh, some uh, silver ladder. Not flunkies, uh, but like flunkies. the higher higher uh, because uh, I mean, Hadromiel shows up uh, as an example. Um, but some of the other higher members of the silver ladder, because ascension is a big thing for them they're they're all about them rungs um mm -hmm. and so this is somebody who has potentially ascended um skipped all of them yeah they, they, i mean there are many mages who there's probably as many mages who have just ascended from being a regular mage compared to those who are arc mages but the arc mages you don't really know about and they they do the grind versus just being surprised so it's too different for lack of a better term paths um but yes uh the hierarch shows up um and uh you know first off obviously checks out the artifacts which uh i imagine um are now hung up on the wall um not in a necessarily place of dec decoration and honor but like in case of seers break glass um <laughs> right and they're warded and protected and well you know, i definitely want to put them up like beside the forge mm -hmm. uh, sort of this is songbird's place this is where they go that's pretty pretty accurate um uh because actually that's true because i imagine atratus herself probably never uses the forge um yeah she has other parts of the workshop she, maybe yeah, yeah yeah there's other tools and and things of that but yeah the the forge itself yeah, she has her own workstation this was mm -hmm. songbirds right yeah so that's that'll definitely be a thing for the cabal to figure out over over the next you know year something like that if they like yeah does anybody actually light that forge anymore or you know well when we get a forge master initiate yeah, or something like that keep it around to see if someone wants to take up forging that's true and yep. uh, just, just to make sure, I'm going to make the hire go through the process. What do you mean? Like follow the rights to get into our sample. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and now, and, and the best part is like Weird is doing this because I'm going to get a dig at him, and like the hierarch like enjoys this. He's like, oh good, finally people are like going through the civilized proper... folks. Yes, <laughs> it's like wait, hang on, I think I think this backfired a little bit. Um, but yeah, the hierarch appreciates your deference to his station. Um, uh, and it's probably one of the times he's like, haha, I got a one up on you. I see you're trying to irritate me with this, but I like this. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, but does come in um, and is respectful. It is your sanctum. You know, it is your territory. Um, and at the end of the day, you guys are a badass cabal. He inspects the artifacts uh, doesn't activate them. Uh, the cost of mana, technically, that would be 
using your guys's mana it's in that artifact but um inspects it you know looks it over uh and uh you know places them back on the rack and and nods and says this is clearly um an artifact a supernal artifact and if everyone is to be believed was made here um and that's truly astounding um, definitely narrowing my eyes at the hierarchy at the if everyone is to be believed and well we can show you right this. i think he's just being using the the turns of phrase yeah. um but that's honestly amazing um and like looks over towards Hadromio and says, we have, uh, you know, records of his methods. Hadromio just kind of gives weird a, a single wink and says, we have some of the records. <laughs> um, Hierarch completely missing anyway, because he's still staring up at these things and goes, good, good. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll see if we can work from that and see if we can do the, to duplicate this, because that would be that would put us on the map um good thank you uh weird we we appreciate your time i imagine you know Travis is probably around that works around and, but weird kind of being the spokesperson uh and the fact that she is the cabal in a metaphysical supernal sense um and uh then exits unless anybody stops no i am anxious to see the back end of him so <laughs> cool so you're definitely not letting him anywhere near the book. Oh, the Forge Master one? The the book that explains how to do this, right? Uh there are uh, like because Somber didn't write any of okay, this. Okay, no, that's down. not what that was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, like oh, that's Hadr- what the thing you were writing was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hadrami yeah, write something down. No, uh Hadromiel has a couple notes and he he was accurate about that because he knows Daphiel and he knows Metatron. Those are his notes and of, of how to summon them. The rote that uh, Songbird made wasn't written down. I don't believe it was. Adromiel has got it. Okay, cool. That's right. Uh, so so yeah, the rote and the two particular supernal beings that were used in the process were there. And it's scrubbed into the forge too. That's right. I remember you doing that. Um, so, you know, those parts are there, but it's not, um, you know, it's not the full thing and like trying to duplicate something exactly the way it's been done before while very, 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 very silver ladder doesn't usually always work out the same way because at the end of the day, uh, this was, um, this was a little bit soul powered and unless you are songbird, May not work exactly the same way. Um, heck, you could probably rewind time and have weird sit and watch and go through the exact same steps. And this time it doesn't work. So, yeah, good luck with that, Sun and Winter. <clears throat> I badmouth my own NPC. Hi. Take that <laughs> silver ladder. But, um, yeah. Um, and so we kind of shift into a kind of narrative state here um, and kind of a, a nice little limbo. What are the kind of next steps for the uh, for the cabal and for uh, for the specific? I mean, the the cabal they're great and all, but what's the next things for Weird and Atratus? Um, short term, I'm gonna let Atratus have whatever space she needs if she wants to talk about what happened or not. Entirely up to her, but I'll just carry on doing stuff until she indicates that she wants to do something different. Sure. Uh, network uh, and we're to be exploring the subway a lot. Yep. Um, that's all kind of interesting. And uh, probably lay off the plans with Moonkeeper a little. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of that was driven by um, Songbird's apparent um, political aspirations. So now that that's not as driving a factor, still keep chipping away at Moonkeeper mm-hmm. and maybe get feelers into the other um, counselors, but uh, definitely not pushing as hard. Sure. I mean, you're friends, not chipping away at Right. Them. Yeah. But building that friendship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah building friendship. <laughs> <what I'm> 
chipping away at them, building the friendship. Same working difference. Working up allies politically so that I can make sure that the that the rookery doesn't have any political interference on things that they want to do. That's very true. Sort of a shield from that mm-hmm. all that bullshit. Yeah. Well, and and you know, and I and I will definitely interject as we continue. But yeah, uh, Hadramiel definitely like transfers that. Well, yeah, Songbird used to be my provost, and so I'm gonna kind of like you know, you basically where where Moonkeeper is an ally for Weird, Hadramiel ends up basically being a not a mentor, um, uh, a patron for the the Cabal and what they do. Um, definitely in the coming months. Uh, definitely a few Silver Ladder folks are nudged over that way because Silver Ladder really wants somebody in there. Hadramiel makes sure that the somebody who gets over there is not a complete douchebag. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, it probably kind of like, listen, I know you kind of rub some of the other Ladderites the wrong way. Let me introduce you to the Rookery. You're probably going to fit in with them. Um, the uh, you know, and yeah. What about for Atratus? At least for the first couple days, first month. Yeah, short term, still working on building and assembling the bar. Uh, I want to get together with people I know who can do spirits. So like Shanna, mm-hmm. werewolves. I'm not going to ask Oceans because that's like, I'm trying to keep like Mysterium normal life and mage versus, life separate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at this point, all my friends are assorted supernatural, so they kind of come with me into normal life. But right. um, I want to sort of work at the resonance of the space. Like, I want it to feel homey and comforting. Very loud. Like, it's just sort of nice, warm space. Yeah. You walk in, you feel like you belong here. So, I want to poke and prod at the spirits and try to attract those you attract the cheers do you wanna, spirit kind of do you want to do you want to do that all on your own or would you let weird contribute by like throwing a blessing on the place and tying off a spell i mean sure i'm not trying to put spells on the place is the thing that's true because yeah you do want a lot of sleepers there mm-hmm. yeah it's trying to cultivate a resonance so the spirits that are hanging out okay yeah i was just thinking like um imbuing the place with a um just a a boon for social skills or something. Yeah, that's actually really good. Just every like every time I go there, I just like I get along with everybody. They get me when I say that bad joke and they they figure out what I really meant. It's just a good yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're not we and bear in mind I say bad joke, I just mean in conversation. We do not have stand up comedy at the Ebon Phoenix. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good You're allowed to keep sitting down while you tell your jokes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, keep There's drinking no while you tell your jokes. <laughs> so if uh, she's willing to accept that help, Weird would sure. drop a boon on the, on the building? Yeah, it's more that I don't know how that works in, like, just an entirely sleeper space. Mm-hmm. Will it not break the spell? No, because no. dissonance uh, and quiescence it's only, only shows up with it, right? obvious magic that okay. they would notice. So if, you know... Uh, weird through on the um, fools rush in with like a bunch of rote uh, skills where everybody just like, man, my jokes always la-. like there is something up with this place because everybody mm-hmm. is funny and everybody is super expressive. and Everybody, you know, just all these roles, you know, it's just like, OK, there is something up with this place, which for the most part, they, nobody's going to have a problem with. But over time, that dissonance is just going to get when, just wear it away. But yeah, it. something a little subtle where it's just like, you yeah. know, it's uh, what's the what's the other is it a timer or a fate spell? But good luck. uh, Good luck. Uh, red light, green light. Or it's just mm-hmm. like, man, yeah, just today the commute was super easy. Uh, most mages, uh, most sleepers not going to notice that. Now they have that spell on them for like a year and they never have a red light. OK, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when they start to freak out. They they develop the you know paranoia that the government is watching them, you know, or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's an AI in the system that's tracking my car. Yeah, 
whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. Uh, and yeah, uh, as, as aforementioned, werewolves are more than happy. Um, it's a little bit outside. Well, no, actually, it is uh, within their territory. Your territory, they are not within your territory. Um, so yeah, more than happy to do that. Uh, I imagine there is a stern talking to with the uh, vampires of like, listen, <laughs> not in this house. <laughs> um, like, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, though you honestly, I don't even have a super big problem with them coming, but like, you're not hunting in my bar. Right. And I was going to say, there are probably some that will like have a chat with you about, listen, like I'm just taking nibbles. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, you're, you're definitely going to have to deal with that question. Uh, is Julia welcome? Right. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah and and i imagine um uh, that there are probably a few um a few werewolves who are more than happy to um uh, uh play bouncer um as necessary um you know it's probably one of those arrangements of like listen if you work for rescue one probably don't drink free but usually you know you give us a call ahead and we make sure there's a table for you you know and mm -hmm. there there ends up being this thing well actually no because you're focusing on sleepers so it's probably yeah. like yeah you can come bounce here but listen you gotta you get you can't like see you, you can come in grab a drink and then get out uh um, <laughs> i know. mean if they want to like i'm not well i'm not worried about the place getting rowdy really so i don't feel like i would need them Right. Here all the That's time. Mm -hmm. I was going to be like, at the one hand, if you just want to like sit at the bar and drink and chill and just sort of be around in case you're needed. And pretty much everywhere like, has a door guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Dreadnought is That's a true, terrific, yeah. <laughs> terrific door <bounce>. person. <laughs> yes. Um, I need to remove somebody. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she understood. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Um, yeah, um of note coming back to to Weird's thing with the um uh with the big 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 mystery. Get there. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, that uh that quickly becomes a central hub for the cabal um and the concilium as a whole. Uh people start to dig into it for the the spatial mystery that it is. Um there are explorations and investigations that uh, some are positive. Uh, people, uh, you know, basically staying in there and trying to figure out like what what is going on in here. Um, no big deal. Then you have the guys who go, hey, let's try and make a new tunnel and new path and let's see what way that goes. And uh, they were never heard from again. Sure. Um, the the tunnel, the wall there is back in brand new 24 hours later. And it's like, OK, write that one down in the notebook. Don't fuck yep. with the Yeah, don't do that. Cool. Um, but, this is the Johnny New Tunnel memorial plaque. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, second question, and getting a little bit farther out. Um, what um, what are the? Because you know, obviously, those are the short term aspirations, uh, and I'm not going to actually talk about what happens. But w beyond this, you know, you get the bar made. You're working on the labyrinth, uh, working on your masks, I believe. Um, what is the like end goal? Well, not end goal. So what is the long term goals for the cabal? What, where do you guys steer it towards? Because originally it was making and investigating things. Uh, but that big making things, well, we have that up on the wall. Um, you know, where, where do you guys kind of direct it? And some of that may actually be a question of like what order um do you kind of work with heavily because you know being a mixed cabal to begin with which is definitely leaning more and more mysterium especially with that amantine arrow uh, out of the picture well weird would definitely be looking for another forge master uh mm -hmm. to join the cabal just as a way to honor chongford mm -hmm. um, and carry on that that legacy 
cool. Um, and we need new banner warden too. But <laughs> yeah, we need new banner warden. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I think um, could you the imagine is going to be a lot harder. In. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Ash. Uh, because Colossus is the only Forge Master in New York. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and then imagine being like being sent from the Adamantine Arrow is like, hey, I heard you guys, you know, like Red Dread showing up. Um, here, here's uh, here's your new Banner Warden, or we'll we'll see. Uh, but he's been assigned. Oh, I'm little Timmy, that's his shadow name. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then being like, and invest, and, you know, he's you know newly awakened, but not a brand new initiate or something like that, and being like, cool, cool. Who is your last Banner Warden? Songbird. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Looking up at the shoes he needs to fill. Um uh, like, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, all right. Um uh, and, and I imagine be that careful to phrase it that it's not shoes to fill, it's just somebody has forged a path that you can walk along. Yeah. Or take your own side trips. It's like a hiking trail. Yeah. And I imagine the free council also probably will be very interested in the cabal, um, considering how antagonistic uh you all have been towards sears um and like all of you especially with the bar now like are very sleeper focused uh you've got a labyrinth you've got you know this bar that caters to sleepers and is not necessarily trying to nudge them to awakening but is more of a training ground for eben phoenix who also yeah get a lot of attention um actually both legacies probably end up being a big focus for the cabal as well and uh i imagine uh within probably a year the two of you find yourselves more often than not in new york um that whole like going out and adventuring thing it happens every now and then because the mysterium looks over to Travis and says hey listen we, we got word of this thing uh or shanna says hey i was down in so and so and i noticed a couple things you want to come by and you know we'll, the answer to that is always going to be yes because indiana jones adventures right mm-hmm. uh i mean indiana like, jones has to come back to the university between right right exactly yeah. yeah i imagine that like as time goes on she's basically spending more time at the Mysterium, writing, doing work for them. It's like, I've got a section in the library that I wrote. Called Geists. Yeah, y'all didn't know anything about them. Which which cuts us to the Geists. Uh, the Geists. Because Ash already mentioned this, so I was like, oh, yes. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's probably... Um, it's probably about six months down the line when Rebecca basically shows up again. Um... Looking a little beaten, but like has gone from being a uh, cool soccer mom to Mad Max soccer mom. Um, still driving the RV. Um, so like RV uh, Mustang. Terminator. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, and and kind of shows up and, uh, you know, kind of knocks on the door. Obviously not following protocols. Inter- meets the new people. Guys kind of chat and catch up and you know she's like okay we're doing it like tomorrow going to fight a death god uh well i mean not necessarily a death god so much as a kerberoi or like not quite on that tier but yeah we've, we've basically been infiltrating a dominion uh we've got it tweaked up a little bit so now it's palatable and now we're going to put one of our own on the throne and uh yeah if you've got any uh good luck charms or kind of looks out to the car or any other you know things you can whip up uh you know any extra oomph is good if you want to come down with this um that's that's cool too but that's kind of one-way trip isn't it um a little bit technically you can leave um the the bigger issue is that uh the dominion rules are basically going to enforce um some time of public service uh when you enter the dominion and that's kind of where we're getting them and forcing ghosts to stay a while and we can try and rehabilitate and send some of them on um, and they're kind of stuck there. So 
it wouldn't be a one way trip so much as a extended stay. Don't think I'm willing to go. Sure. I, yeah, I, I, that wasn't my expectation. That's why I was just, you know, I, I, more cars, please. Or, you know, but you could <laughs> you could also like whip them up an army, couldn't you? That has problems. Okay. <laughs> we we that was discussed. <laughs> what I can do for you is send you Gabe. Gabe goes, excuse me, what? <laughs> Isn't this the plan? I mean, yeah. I mean You were hanging back here to help me out until they were ready? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah, who am I kidding? Yeah, you're good. Um like even even Gabe before me would see that you're you're good to go. Um, wow. So how do we get rid of this whole like dealy thing that we've got going on here? I'm trying to think, how do I drop a familiar merit? <laughs> um, in in your case, because it's it's based off a spell. Um, mm. you know, somewhere Just in there, the spell. right? You have to undo the spell, which, if I remember correctly, you would have um cast yourself spent the willpower on so at this point you need somebody with prime to come in and go and destroy the spell uh okay. and that would break it technically i think actually the spell requires oh, both definitely. but yeah you can probably unmake it with that too yeah uh but yeah. it also requires both parties to be um uh okay with it so technically the familiar can choose to just quit right mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that's actually yeah. what I really. Yeah, it's like you can just be like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm done," and Gabe kind of like walks over, gives you like this really crappy salute, shakes your hand, and says, "It's I'm been a pleasure, ma'am. I'm, uh, I'm shipping off tomorrow, I guess." Just hug. It, it is a long hug, uh, but then he's like, "All right, yeah, I'm, I'm down for this." Kind of looks over at Rebecca. Uh, can I drive? <laughs> I have another idea. <laughs> the simultaneous yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't send you an army. I can send you another ghost. Okay. And I'm going to cast a create ghost and make a rank two version of Emily Miller. Gabe kind of looks over, looks back, looks back, and goes, is simultaneously really weird but also really cool it's also she looks like a Stratus at the beginning of mm -hmm. the chronicle right um had no idea what she was doing probably ghost emily imagine has a little bit better um uh, grasp of what is going on yeah um but like looks over at gabe looks over at rebecca okay all right <laughs> And uh, Rebecca's like, cool, is she going to stay? Yes. If I spend the willpower and release the spell, she's not going to expire. Right. Ha ha ha, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dork. <laughs> <laughs> Set in uh, character. Uh, uh, because they need someone to think of them it keeps them going and it gives them so. the, the essence mm -hmm. yeah so yeah and and to to come back around to to craig's like you could make an army if you made an army of a bunch of individual people who are all like living or have somebody thinking about them constantly that would generate a point of essence to make up for the essence that they're spending each day but if you created a bunch of like Roy Rogers. Just ghosts. ghosts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They would right. run out. But yeah, um, and that ends up being a uh, detriment of essence to the to the group. Uh, but in but this yeah, case... All, of, all the reasons Rebecca wanted Gabe, she's now got two. Right. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so Rebecca kind of gives you, you know, the, the hug and says, great, now I have two of you. Um... Mm -hmm. Go fuck yep. them up. All I have right. Faith in you. Uh, we're we're feeling good. So yeah, and uh, 
you wave from the door. Quicken ghosts and make them stronger for mm-hmm. like a long time. You could, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say I do that. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, we're, we're in narrative. Yeah. There is no dice rolling here, and you're in your domain. Um, it's yeah, I'll super put the easy. vote that like rank. What rank would be good? Uh, technically, the spell only allows you to bump up one more rank. Okay. Um, but yeah, and then you can bump potency into like stats and attributes up to their max. So you can basically kit them out as a as rank three ghost, which is about as scary as normal ghosts can get. Beyond yeah. that, you get into you know the geist territory where they're a little yeah. warped and stuff like that. Wait, but yeah, I will do that. Yeah, Gabe and Emily Hulk up, get in the back seat of the car. Well, Let's go to the soccer before- match, mom. <laughs> What was that? Yeah, before um, I want to give um, uh, give her a hug, and then I'll just send out through her connections, um, exceptional luck, just to give them a little boost, a bit of a boon. Hmm. Yeah, you'd have to borrow a couple connections, yeah. but yeah, you could definitely mm-hmm. like, hey, uh, yeah. you know, just sit with me. We'll have a little chit chat while I work through this ritual and just bless mm-hmm. the entire crew. Yeah, yep. that's pretty dope. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, she she hops in the Mad Max mobile with Gabe <laughs> and Emily um, and drives herself to hell. To uh, hell. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, disappear. And, you know, you'll have to check in on them sometime in the future to, to see how that goes. But um, it's hard to just poke your head down in. But maybe with the scry and enough death magic, you know, weird might manage it, but, um, cool. Uh, trying to think of other little recaps. Um, just in general, like, um, you had talked about directions, like weird's not driving where the cabal goes. Right. Yeah. She's always supporting the efforts of others, but she will be engaged in a, like a prolonged recruitment drive of getting interesting characters into the cabal kind of thing. Oh yeah, I have no doubt. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, within, because <laughs> uh, Perry asked, we'll get to that. Uh, anything <laughs> with Zolius, we will definitely get to that here in a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, with within the cabal, and especially at this point, there is a certain level of political inertia uh, that has already started and kind of rolls on as there's a little bit of disquiet within the ranks and some chit chat here and there. And Red Dread isn't kicked out of the Adamantine Arrow or out of the Concilium so much as he is um, reprimanded a little bit for poking his nose in and getting involved in politics. Um, Pip and uh, Moonkeeper both have have some words with him about, hey, listen, you're you're in charge of the Adamantine Arrow. Why don't you stay over there? Like we have two counselors on the council. We can handle this. Um, and they kind of nudge off the uh, some of that pressure. Some of that uh, is a Pip has always been kind of her own person. Anyways, Moonkeeper, who was frequently under red dreads thumb uh a is getting a little bit older um and so physically just looking at him it's a little bit harder to just kind of discredit him uh but also but suddenly he seems he's really tall. working on that seam for a while so. right and he's also <laughs> kind of like really good friends with weird who is part of this cabal that kind of flips off the hierarch and red dread a lot um and so that's you know, nudging. And like I said, Red Dread isn't like chased out or anything like that. It's just like, hey, we don't really need you looming over us quite as much, um, which then means, of course, that the big anchor uh, for uh, Sun and Winter kind of gets eroded away, especially since all the counselors kind of realize, you know, we like each other and we like the cabal really well. And Sun and Winter just like he picked us and we appreciate that because we're kind of the best of the best and all uh, he's kind of a dick <laughs> yeah now and that said when they uh when the concilium kind of put him in power it was a like hey the vampires are a problem uh we don't have a lot of control uh specifically and this is something that 
you as a cabal never got into very heavily, but the upper echelons of New York society, the upper crust, the the one percent, uh, the influencers and political power and stuff like that. That's where the silver ladder has often been working, and it was often undermined by vampires. But see, the vampires now are a little bit more um, vampires of the people. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and and that whole Carthian movement uh, mm-hmm. has kind of shifted You're their welcome. focus. Hmm? You're yeah. welcome. Exactly. Uh, Eat the rich. <laughs> Eat the rich. Literally. Well, no, that's Literally. the problem. Uh, well, I guess they probably still are eating the rich, but yes. Um, and while this has put vampires and uh, mages a little bit at odds in terms of trying to steer the public, the Carthians really are far more laid back um, and trying to like, they're still vampires and that still means that they're leeches and problems uh, to human society. Um, There's enough. Huh? They gotta eat. Yeah. Uh, But fortunately there's enough infighting and argument. And it's kind of like watching the free council work that they kind of, eat themselves a little bit um, so they don't quite have as much regimented influence that the Invictus had. Uh, It means the Silver Ladder can spread out. They can work their stuff. They can work their Cryptopolis. And all of a sudden, everyone's kind of looking over at Sun and Winter and going, you know, you are kind of a bit of a dick. (laughs) Um, Give him the Oracalcum watch on his last day. Right. (laughs) Um, So uh, Sun and Winter does fortunately kind of get the hint and uh, basically announces that he is resigning. Uh, he's going to step down. He's got, I've got some mysteries. I've got some, some work that I'm, I'm doing. Um, and just the higher work job is just taking too much of my time. So I'm going to pass the baton and uh, the next uh, big concilium meeting. Uh, Hadramiel is elected as high work. Um, most of the council members stay. Um, the Abrimos replacing him is. Uh, shit. <laughs> Quick Takanka. Notes. <laughs> Abrimos tag. Uh, as far as I know, we're the only two Abrimos in the goddamn cows. <laughs> is it Borsin Abrimos? Uh, Borsin is Mastigus. Ah. Uh, ah, yes, here we are. Uh, the one uh, joining is a one Deborah from Seattle. You did not meet Deborah, uh, but Deborah is uh, a judge. Mm-hmm. Cool. And uh, yeah, has left Seattle. There's there's some drama going on there, but more or less, um, Deborah is kind of unhappy with the stalemate. Uh, and there was a couple words and a little nudge here and there from an acanthus or two that basically sent Deborah over this way. Um, and while Deborah is higher in gnosis um, than you know the normal mage. Um, she's not like Samson level of like, I could probably be an arc mage if I wanted to, like Samson is. Deborah is more like, you know, Hadramiel and, and many of the other counselors who are like, I hit gnosis five and six. I'm pretty happy with where I'm at and I have years of experience to pass on and help assist others. Um, so yes, Deborah takes over that spot, uh, which puts another free council member on the uh, on the council, um, and you know things find a new, you know, status quo. I'd find the word eventually, <laughs> um, and things kind of settle in, and you know everybody is able to continue on with their long term projects. So because the, Perry, well, go ahead. What's Atratus's view on like nameless and? mages outside the various orders work with them yeah so would that be an issue like if we like we're not at words ideas to not limit ourselves to just the diamond orders or the pentacle i mean i literally have the job of ambassador dealing with other people yeah. so oh, you mean to it, join your people totally, yeah we'd be totally open to most nameless orders are nameless orders because they are avoiding getting well, involved I with temp- well, I don't necessarily mean nameless orders, but nameless mages because there's nameless ages, mages that aren't part of an order. Oh yeah, but yeah, generally speaking, same same situation. They're, if they, they join up with your cabal, either they haven't joined pick. one yet or they left for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Generally, yeah, I'm just. I feel like if they would be willing saying, to come join our cabal, they're probably also 
gun and join an order. Right. right. Just saying we keep our options open. I mean, because Weird lived as a nameless mage for, you know, for a while until she found that there was a whole society. Because yep. she didn't really know. But yeah, so but once you found a society, thing. you picked right. an order. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's yeah. the same with the ghost wolves. Like, right. they're just lost. They had no idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bring them in, teach them things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which Free Council is very good about. Uh, and then, uh, yes, because Perry asked, and because somebody was invariably going to ask, what about Zolius? Um, Zolius doesn't factor into the story for a while. Um, Zolius is just not around. Don't hear from him. Does anybody ever check up on him? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, I last heard he was being tortured by the Archmage who was living in my brain. Less tortured and so much as being re-educated. Uh, mm. But yes, Zolius does eventually... Yes, this is torture, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Zolius does eventually uh, show up again. Um, uh, it's not a pleasant picture. Um, he, as is, you know, his pylon's job is attempting to infiltrate the concilium. Um, and when you meet him, he is a prelate of the eye um, and has drunk the Kool-Aid though. For those who are aware, um, you don't necessarily have to uh, willingly join to become a prelate. Um, so much as if somebody stamps the iron seal on your own Eros, hi, you're a prelate. Welcome to having really weird dreams and commands. And if I remember correctly, you can't get, Obsession beats until you've completed a mystery command beat. Um, so, yes, uh, it sounds like Zolius's punishment was, hi, you just joined. Uh, there's no getting out of it. Um, he is found pretty Welcome quick- to middle management. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, there's enough people who know about Zolius. And, I mean, you guys let everybody know hey he this is what he does um and he is he's is imprisoned um and uh the ministry of the panopticon don't see in that big of a rush to get him out and the pentacle aren't in a big rush to trade him for anybody and um for mastigos who hates barriers and chains and locks and stuff like that. And he's not in a cell, um, but there's enough sworn oath spells and things of that nature that he might as well be. Uh, and yeah, he, he provides uh, service to the Silver Ladder um, and makes portals places and uh, is otherwise, um, you know, just kind of stuck is there anything you can do to get the iron the seal prelate? off yeah that no. might be a mystery that atratus wants to dig into but uh similar to because making it seems an, similar to making like oh yeah i think the evan phoenix would do mm-hmm. rehabilitate like, sears yeah Good project mm-hmm. but yeah especially this was done to you you didn't choose this yep we fix broken things, and oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> yes. Oh boy. This could be my masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That, I hadn't thought about that, but yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that is, uh, yeah, so that's definitely one of those, like, on the to-do list, on the board with Titus. Uh, oh, yes, and if anybody's wondering, yes, they get married. Cute. Yes. Awesome. Um, eventually, that does mean... Somewhere there's little werewolf Titus children and wolf blooded. Not necessarily, because the werewolf kids aren't always werewolves, right? Uh, correct. They uh they will usually end up being just normal humans, or actually, I don't know if they can be just normal humans. I think they're they o- are always wolf blooded and werewolves. I can't I mean, having parents that are werewolves is gonna kind of fuck you up. If I will say this. Just- Thankfully, werewolves of Forsaken does not delve into mating habits of werewolves nearly as much as werewolf the apocalypse werewolf the apocalypse (laughs) skip the chapter kids don't look into it um it's not great they're they're, nope 
there's some good stuff not out even there. once yeah there's good stuff out there for where uh for for the world of darkness stuff just go ahead and skip past some of that kind of stuff because it is very dated um and also some of it is gross um <laughs> so we're just gonna move right along uh but yes uh in the case of yes titus and alicia um the 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 hooking up becomes the uh living together becomes the well yeah i guess we should get married um kind of thing um and less less of pressure and more the like no we're gonna do this mostly because alicia wants a big wedding with a ton of werewolves there and she knows a uh, couple mages who can make sure that the venue is awesome looking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have the best wedding. Yeah. The best wedding. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yes. Um, uh, but that that definitely happens. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else we're missing. Uh, the Leaf Theater uh, definitely continues on. Uh, it is a fairly active if... Um, so I wanted dude. to limit Christopher Wallace one arcane play a year. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the labyrinth uh, is puts out a lot of occult stuff, which gives you a lot of people who start poking around into Christopher's life, which he's like, I am not okay with this, uh, <laughs> which draws into like some alternate identities and, you know, pseudonyms, which just mean that the people who do catch with just dig into that. Yeah. And now fortunately he has, um, oh my gosh, brain just f- fell out um christopher wallace and steven, steven. Uh, steven. thank you um and fortunately steven being at acanthus is like no that's fine you guys are going to just chase your tails and you know uh which of course drives the labyrinth machine forward um mm-hmm. and so people are searching for um you know, basically this this fictitious, the pseudonym that uh, Christopher starts to use, and that ends up being the message the, boards. Huh? The message boards going into this. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, it just, it it's this deep labyrinth, which compared to some of the labyrinths that other Guardians run, which ends up being a little more cutthroat and stuff like that. And there's probably a couple terrible people that do show up, um actually i guess that is a question for for weird uh sorry i know you're looking to, about to look away there um yeah. but um you know for for weird when the terrible people show up do you send them to other labyrinths or how, how do you handle those people because i know you've you've looked into the guardian stuff a little bit yourself uh and you know what happens to some of those people yeah um yeah, she would send them to other labyrinths. Just not, I mean, to, to be kind of blunt, not willing to get blood on Weird's hands. Not not necessarily. She doesn't feel that she's a good, um, that she's in a position to judge someone else. Mm-hmm. So she'll let somebody else do that. It's not a matter of, like, if somebody is, is irredeemable on their face, like, that, she has no problem bumping them off. But uh, the the testing and the determination of is this really irredeemable or is there something that can be salvaged here that could be of use to the guardians should leave that to somebody else. Gotcha. So she basically runs the the first tier of labyrinth uh, mm-hmm. and the, the low people- level veils. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and uh, thank you for the question in chat. Uh, name I am having a hard time reading because that is dark on. Black, but didn't weird have to kill someone to become a guardian in the first place? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but that, you know, it's it, it's very easy to be like, this person is bad. This person is problematic. And we believe that souls are reincarnated. So we're going to give them a second chance to ride the wheel and come out the other side. Um, one of the reasons people don't like guardians is guardians would just be like, death cult? kill this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, guardians <laughs> go. Yeah. Man, this guy's a problem. Let's just kill him. Give him another chance. It's yeah, not actually destroying him. And meanwhile, everybody else is going, ah. <laughs> yeah. Felt that. So, uh, yeah. Not, not Orders don't get along for a reason. Yeah. Like, they don't all agree. So, And we're never really bought into that that whole philosophy thing. But, yeah. Yep. She's, still under, she's still sees that the Guardians serve an important purpose. Yep. I feel like it's worse if you don't buy into the philosophy, though. (laughs) Like, if you truly believe the wheel of reincarnation, this guy sucks. Kill him. We'll get a new go. Okay, you really believe that. 
if you don't and you still just fucking kill that guy because they told you to <laughs> there's a back and forth That's worse there. um and it's it's actually i mean like the guardians for and, and some of it is like believing in the wheel versus believing in the hieromagus that is coming uh which again we have not delved heavily into mm-hmm. um a lot of the order stuff uh but yeah uh, what about drifter so- what, what what about drifter you leave drifter out of this drifter isn't involved <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Weird believes in the purpose of the Guardians, that, that power is dangerous and only the worthy should be wielding it and that kind of stuff. She's seen evidence of that, so she supports that, but she's not into the whole drinking the Kool-Aid, doing the cult and the Hero Magus kind of stuff like that. So she's she's with the the general purpose of the Order without getting into all of the other stuff that goes along with it, that's all. Uh, uh, and we're to be working, as time goes on, we'd be working with the Guardians in those sort of capacities. Uh, yeah, uh, as, as the questions are coming in about do about Chris's next character, A, in case you've missed it, this is the end of The Rookery. Uh, we will have a further Q&A, um, like, amongst everybody else. But like I said in the last episode, we're giving you all a chance to get caught up so we can have more people in here. Because I still have, I, I, I had people this week who are like, hi, I just started. I'm like, just started. boy, howdy. <laughs> Is that the time to start? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's actually a great right. time because you can come yeah. watch new stuff the whole thing. and yeah. catch up on old stuff and have, have a good hangout. Yep. Uh, but uh, actually, I think that is probably a good good spot, unless anybody has a last little minute about the end of the characters or anything like that. Uh, Just I mean, longer term, word was going to be definitely getting more into the anima mundi oh, and oh, exploring yeah. the astral stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, y'all got any more of that songbird? <laughs> <laughs> no, songbird's gone, man. Songbird is actually gone. Um the there there was no ascension um oh damn yeah uh, oh, beans. So, so uh to to yeah like the first thing i would have done would be to look at the shield that now says songbird like does it got a mind is he in it no uh no, no. Song, songbird is gone um it um utterly um uh, unmade uh th- this would be i i mentioned to them off offline that um th- there are a couple different endings and one of them is if you do it too good um and in short songbird put too much of themselves into it um and uh there was not enough based off of my scoring thing that i came up with and a little uh mechanic it's on conca it'll be visible here in a bit uh but total score and of course bear in mind this is me adding stuff as we went so but a total score of 47 anything above a 40 was um you create an artifact and disillusion of the self uh there's a range there where you made an artifact and ascended there's an art uh where you made an artifact and just died uh but yes um it's a discussion that ends up going out throughout the uh the concilium and people start to it's awkward because it's like, yay, Songbird made an artifact. Oh, sorry about your loss, but hey, at least at least they did this awesome thing. And then somebody kind of points out, it's like, um, but from most of our writings about known ascensions, they leave behind the Soraya, uh, the, the the crystal skull, the, the the skeleton, the you know something, and that's there's there's a knot. Can't find one. Say that again can't find one right Mm -hmm. um and so yeah uh songbird um i I, I think colossus is the one who said it go out uh like a rock star um and just threw it all in and yeah uh a little meta thing uh if uh if songbird had ascended a the soraya would have been there but the uh the artifact's name would not have a code word command word, whatever it is, uh, would not have changed. Um, and that would have been left behind as the artifact as Songbird ascended. Um, so uh, not a bad thing so much as Songbird threw it all in. And the artifact does have a couple extra stuff. That's why the rotes were in there. Um, but yes, <laughs> rip the goat. Rip the goat. <laughs> um, but that said, I mean, it will spread from concilium to concilium to convocation. Um, you know, that, you know, songbird of the Rookery Cabal 
made an artifact and that is one of those will go down in history and i mean let's between songbird saying hey you got to brag about this and weird going hey have you heard about the awesome rookery let me tell you a tale um <laughs> everybody gonna know uh and yes the the soul stones are still there um yeah they they didn't go anywhere they're still there uh useful tools for the rookery uh to use um the you know daemonomicon are there yeah so um oh yes so hi thanks everybody for joining us um yay big round of applause uh, thank you guys very much uh for tagging along uh both you guys at home and you guys here who have put up with me for 19 months, 17 months. I can't remember. Uh, it's been a bit, <laughs> um, especially with 2020 now. taking like three years. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yes, uh, if you are somehow just now joining us or anything like that, or you're just get, getting caught up on YouTube, whatever. Um, next week, we will still be playing. Same time, different station. Twitch.tv slash Occultist Anonymous is where we will be doing all our stuff from now on. Next week specifically, we will be um, playing Blades in the Dark. We will be starting with a little session zero to do some character creation um, and then jumping into the, the first uh, first episode. Um, uh, we will also have our new uh, crew member, uh, Ralph. Uh, who will be joining us. Uh, we've been hanging out with Ralph for a little while in Discord privately. Uh, very, very excited to get to play with him um, and kind of iron out any little tech uh, issues that we may have uh, because, hi, have you seen the show? Um, <laughs> actually, I mean, to be fair, have you seen any online show? There's technical difficulties abound. So uh, Ralph will be joining us and we will be doing a new um, Blades in the Dark Somewhere in there, we will do a session zero for the uh, Mage Chronicle. We'll also probably squeeze in a Q&A somewhere in there. Uh, then after Chris's run and mini series of Blades in the Dark, we will have Craig's mini series of a redacted uh, campaign. <laughs> uh, Different game. Uh, do you guys know Ralph? I don't believe so. Ralph is in Discord, but is fairly quiet. Doesn't uh, doesn't chat uh, much with you all. Uh, is he quite chatty us. with us, uh, <laughs> which is very cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to playing with Ralph. Uh, a lot of Ralph's characters. R Ralph's like, oh yeah, the past couple characters I made are this, 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 and this. And I went, yeah, <laughs> that's going to fit in with us just <laughs> fine. Just fine. <laughs> uh, so, and uh, yeah, uh, we will probably have, um, uh, we, we will have a nice little, uh, part of the session zero, especially because it may be the first experience folks have with us we'll probably do a little little uh, introduction and hello uh both ourselves and ralph uh just so everybody gets to know and we are doing a session zero where we're actually not just doing character creation but we're going to talk about lines and veils our our comfort levels of stuff and what stuff we want to cover and what stuff we don't want to have um yes <laughs> and yes uh perry is not ralph it's funny how that works. Uh, so yes, um, we'll have that. And uh, then we'll have the next Chronicle, which the only thing I will say so far is it will not be a modern setting. That's my my only thing. Oh, and and they are also uh, going to be starting as brand new mages. Uh, so like one and two dot of Arcana, awakened. one Gnosis. Uh, they're going to be brand spanking new. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to know each other and how it happened that there's four four of them uh, so that's going to be something that we're going to cover in the mage session zero so yeah there's there's a couple different things that we've got planned um but yes if you're not already following twitch.tv slash occultist anonymous please do uh because that will make sure you get all the notifications if you're a youtube watcher i just make sure you're subbed uh there'll be a new playlist continue. yeah there will be a new playlist um so uh no it is not ancient greece uh, well, I don't know. Ancient Greece would be kind of fun, but no, um, cool. they kind of have an idea of what they want to do, but I'm yelling at them that, no, we don't decide until section zero. Like, no, we're not deciding that we're doing this. Well, I know we're not deciding this, <laughs> but this is what I was thinking. Do this. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why I put up with them. Uh, There's a lot of conversations <laughs> where if we do decide to do this, <laughs> this is what I would like to do. Maybe you know, hypothetically. <laughs> They're useless. I don't, 
I'm, I'm so looking fun. for three new cabal mates. <laughs> you just mates. thanked us uh, for putting up with you. Yeah. So, yeah, you true. know, thank, uh, thank us for putting up with you. Yeah. For uh, letting us play redacted. <laughs> uh, old West suggestion, pirate mages, vampires. We are not, we may eventually do a little vampire miniseries, which is one of the other things is um, uh, we may start seeing little side series or little, little mini series and stuff like that. Um, so keep your eye out for more stuff on Twitch, more stuff on YouTube. One of the big reasons, and we are very, very thankful for Onyx Path um, uh, sponsoring us, supporting us, putting us on the channel. When they first launched, we we were there the very first week anchoring this Friday at, well, for me, 6, uh, 6 p.m. slot. And we have been here the entire time uh and we are finally going to take a break well i'm taking a break oh it's gonna be glorious uh, thursday my normal prep night is gonna roll around and i'm gonna go i don't have to do shit that's gonna be gonna do and it's nothing. gonna be great to play like alongside you now oh yeah, yes it's blades so i don't have to do shit yes yeah, <laughs> uh, i have to do things yes, prep is important <laughs> um but yeah so that's gonna be a lot of fun um twitch chat thank you very much for joining us it it has been absolutely awesome uh i also see a bunch of folks who have uh followed the onyx path because now i have a cool new little thing uh that i'm not going to be able to use for the next like eight weeks uh for the onyx path channel but um yeah uh we'll be using it on our channel but yet um they have been absolutely terrific uh supporters of us they've you know supported us on on twitter they've they've shared our stuff um but yeah we're going to take a a move over to uh our own channel mostly just because we want to run stuff that is not necessarily Onyx Path, um, i.e., you know, next week we're playing Blades in the Dark, which is not by Onyx Path. Uh, so it's going to give us a little more freedom to kind of do our own thing. Uh, we also won't necessarily have to work around uh, the Onyx Path uh, channel. They have a lot of other folks who do this, um, and so we're just kind of following the lead of other folks who do similar. Uh, actually, uh, in 30 minutes, Vorpal Tales will be playing, uh, I think, Hunter? It maybe Hunter, it's this, yeah. this, okay uh or maybe it's a silent game i can't remember they do a bunch uh drifter is probably not returning in blades in the dark um though i guess i do this have is to... my new and original character do drifter too <laughs> <laughs> drifter jr um but uh yeah um we, we already have some idea of what chris has got planned um we've kind of picked out yeah, remember how I said don't pick out stuff until session zero? I think we already have everybody's I didn't, classes. I didn't pick anything up. <laughs> okay. I don't really need to use mine. Oh, I haven't actually picked okay. anything. The only thing I we decided, have... and actually, I was so happy. I will I'll talk about this on screen. I was so happy that they all agreed on the type of crew that they want to run yeah. in like 30 seconds. <laughs> Whereas the last Blades of the Dark game I put together, everyone wanted to play a different kind of crew, and I had to literally do a ranked ranked choice voting oh website and run it for everyone <laughs> wow. to figure out to what we were playing. How terrible Noctal is. Noctal. Uh, no, no, hang on. He gets to keep this. Uh, so for anybody who's... This is, this is Drifter's older brother, Tokyo. Like you get two thumbs up. Thank you for that one. I love the fast. Don't encourage. Years. Don't encourage. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll encourage this. I mean, at, at this point, like we can't get rid of Noctal. Like he's just, he's just, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, that said, um, no, sorry, his inflection was wrong. We can't get rid of Noctal. Please help. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that said, um, yeah, it's kind of wrapping up. Uh, we'll be here next week. Don't worry, just be a different channel. Uh, come join us on Discord, uh, yeetinto.space, which probably is not going to change, so we're just going to keep that <laughs> because it's great. Um, and uh, I mean, I did it. Yeah, it's true. Uh, join, uh, you know, join us there. Uh, hang out. We will have more notes. We will have more stuff. Uh, this will continue to be mage focused for the future um but we may over time branch out uh especially if uh as support comes in from patreon.com slash occult is anonymous or say lucky dot club um you know the ability to um uh basically point money at other stuff um if anybody any uh patron is very curious how money is split up amongst us 
you are welcome to message me on Patreon. If you have like concerns, you want to know how that's working, you're welcome. I'm not making that stuff public, but like everybody agrees we're, we're everybody's happy with uh with stuff and uh but as that money increases the you know possibility of being like hey we can do this thing or that thing and we can pay somebody to do uh you know whatever uh for instance we get brenna and uh she does art for us all the time um we're at the tier where I can hire my own wife to edit videos. Um, thank God the Christmas rush is gone because I have been doing the editing recently and I remember how time consuming it is. Um, so uh, that kind of stuff, that's where your Patreon funds go to. Uh, it goes to my arm. <laughs> and now you've just muted yourself. You muted yourself. You muted your microphone. <laughs> Excellent job, dude. That's great. Well done. <laughs> but yeah, the mic cable. Also, your Patreon funds. No, that came out of my pocket. It's no big deal. Uh, it's $5 cable. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what your guys' stuff goes towards. Uh, and my R, correct. Thank you. I had the wrong mm -hmm. inflection. I was, I'm sorry, Perry. Um, yeah, so um, I, I'm realizing I'm kind of stalling, but um, this is goodbye. Until next week. <laughs> Stay lucky.